Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to take a rusty old piece of uh, 7 8 inch uh, round stock and hopefully turn that into uh, a special purpose bolt uh, to use on my <clears throat> Cub Cadet Zero Turn lawnmower. Now don't leave me, this, this video is not about the lawnmower. This is about some lathe work and a little bit of mill work. On the lathe we'll be doing some turning, some facing, some uh, threading, uh, some parting. Uh, then over on the mill we'll do a little uh, drilling and a little reaming. So let's take a quick little glance out there at the mower and I'll show you what we're going to be making. Okay, here's a front shot of the uh, zero turn mower and the bolt that we're going to be replacing is right down here. I've just got it finger tight now. It's a 5 16 18 bolt with about 7 8 inches of thread. Now what that does is hold down this little uh, deck plate down here that you can flip up. By doing so, it makes it so much easier to get in here and clean around the belts. Cup Cadet recommends that uh, uh, you wash it down good, wash the mowing deck down good, and clean out all the uh, debris. Uh, I have uh, seen a couple of videos uh, online where folks didn't do that, and it got hot, and the belt got to slipping, and the dry grass in there actually caught fire. Now, with this model, they actually provide you a little uh, wrench to take this bolt in and out. If you don't leave, put it in there, this plate will rattle. Uh, so you want, to, uh, you want to have it in there and have it snug, not, uh, not real tight, but just snug. But what we want to do today, or what I'm going to do today with that piece of 7 8 inch material, is make a, a bolt with basically a, a T-bolt. Uh, I've checked my foot space and so forth and it should be fine, shouldn't get in the way. Uh, but just make a little uh, T-bolt to go in here so I don't have to force this wrench out. And it's not a ratchet wrench so you got to turn a little bit, take it off, come back around and so forth. Strictly a convenience item. But you know, if you got the tools to make it, why not? So let's go back in the lathe and get started. Okay, I'm over at the lathe now. We'll put our piece in. I want to be sure I've got at least two inches sticking out there. That's going to be close after I part it. So we'll come on out a little bit. Or after I face it. Previous videos in the comments, several folks have asked about this carriage stop and if I had a video on making it this carriage stop actually came with this lathe came mounted on it it's it's pretty simple I think Mr. Pete has a video on making one but uh, uh, just search around on uh, if you're interested in in one uh, search around on YouTube for carriage carriage stops and I'm sure you'll find something that will work. There's really lot, not a lot of machining in it except for machining the uh, concave 45 degree or actually included 90 degree angle in there. Very very handy addition to your lathe if you do not have one. Let's turn this down now just enough to clean it up. We'll face it in just a moment. That's about 20 thousandths off of each side. Alright, I'm going to put that carry stop to use here. 
and come right in and zero out my DRO on the z-axis there come in one inch pull my stop up and then tighten it down and with this micro adjust right here uh, not that it's all that critical for what I'm doing here But I can get that right on the money. That's some kind of gummy material. That may take some uh, emery cloth. Alright, what I'm going to do is this first inch here, we're going to thread about 7 eighths of it. But I want to turn it down to 325 thousandths to begin with. I'm going to put this uh, cushion washer between the bolt and that deck. And this is just this is like eight millimeter washer and that's just a little bit loose on the five sixteenths and i'd like for it to be a snug fit so we're going to turn it down first to where this is a snug snug fit on the uh, on the shoulder itself Seven eighty-two. I'm going to start with about three thirty-five, and then we can turn down from there. It's about four hundred forty-six thousandths to go, and we're going to keep working with this piece. Again, that's some kind of gummy stuff there, so hopefully it will thread. Alright, I expect this is going to be just a little bit large. And it's hot too. Alright, so let's take about another. Let's see where we are. Three forty-eight. Let's take about twenty more thousandths off. I'm just wanting a fit on for this washer that uh, will be snug so the washer doesn't fall off every time I take the bolt out. Yeah, that's going to be just right. Alright, now this washer is... About 139, 140 thousandths thick. So what I'm going to do is come up here. This is on bottomed out on my carriage stop. I'm going to zero out the DRO right here, the Z axis. And then I'm going to use this micro adjust to back everything up about a about 125 of that 140. All right. Now we want to turn the remainder of this down. Again, this is a 5 16 18. And it measures 304, 305. So that's what we want to take this down to. And it currently it's 348. So we want about about 42 thousandths off of there. That's 43 on the DRO. 
Well, I guess I should touch all first. Let's see about where we ended up. 310. I think we can thread that. <coughs> now usually my rule of thumb is when it comes to threading on the lathe, if it's half inch or less, I will do it with a die. Anything over, say, Five eighths or larger. I will try to uh, single point it. But I've got a a five sixteenths eighteen die in my die guide, and I do have a previous video uh, back in the archives on actually making that. There's a lot of those out on the. Uh, on YouTube world as well. So, see what, let me get the bottle of threading oil and just douse that good. This particular thread or die is, has a large lead-in shoulder on it. So we'll, we'll run it up uh, pretty much to this stop here. Then we'll turn the die around and finish threading up just to our washer shoulder. Slow our RPM down. Okay. Okay, that got the die started. Let me clean some chips out of it right quick. And starting up there fine. So we want to run that up right to the shoulder. I don't use this threading jig all that often and sometimes I forget how it works. Alright, so now we got it tapped all the way up to our washer shoulder. See if I can quickly find a nut just to, just to test it with. bit tight right up there at the top but we can uh, I'll run this nut back and forth a few times on it and get that cleared up. Now I think what we're going to do before I part this off I think we'll go on over there to the mill and drill and tap our hole or I'm sorry drill our hole for the T in here um, and again before I do that I want to go back out and check the height on this. Screw this down in. Check the height to be sure my T-handle clears the uh, the finger lip that's in there. So I'll bring you right back when we get uh, over to the mill. Alright, I carried this out to the mower, tested it with the washer on, worked just fine, and I marked the height of the uh, uh, finger lip that's right behind this. And I believe if we measure over about an inch from that edge we should be fine. I'm going to mount this uh, in my mill vise now. Now what I want to use for the T, I uh, found this piece of 5 16 rod but it's uh, all the cold roll or hot roll that I've ever bought always uh, measures out to be a few thousand smaller than the nominal size. So this is a, a few thousand smaller than the 5 16 which we're going to ream this hole in here for 5 16 minus 1 thousandths. If this is too loose, I got a piece of 8 millimeter chrome rod here 
Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what this uh, wound up being. Measure 7.9, so I'm sure it's a uh, 8 millimeter. But what I want to do is make an interference fit for the T handle here. I don't want to go through the whole ordeal of drilling and tapping for a grub screw to hold that down. That's, that's really not necessary for what we're doing here. So if this, if the 8 millimeter is too big, and this is too loose. What I'll do is take this smaller one and uh, once we cut it to length and get it round off and just put a couple little dings right in the center. I take the chisel or the uh, punch and interrupt that just a little bit. But we'll get to that in just a second. Let's find the center here. One more thing I did before I left the lathe uh, was come right here and put a, a good chamfer on that edge as well. See what, I'm going to go just a little higher there. I just want to be sure I don't interfere with that uh, or that, that uh, finger lift doesn't interfere with this. Alright, we'll lock our axes down now. Alright, this is let me double check that size. This is a 1964. This is 1 64th smaller than a 5 16th. Gonna buy a new chuck one of these days. Now we're gonna ream this out. <clears throat> Got everything uh, zeroed out on the DRO, so I need to come back to that point. That's going to be just a little bit loose, and I feel certain that this 8mm is going to be too tight. No? I believe I'm going to go with just this piece of coal roll, though, since they're both fitting about the same. But what I'm going to do... I'll cut this off to length. We'll go back to the lathe and get this piece uh, made. And then before I, before I leave that in there per permanently, I'll put, a, again, put a little bit of interruptions on this uh, to cause an interference fit. All right, I got that deburred and ready to part it off. But before we part this off, I cut a piece of that uh, coal roll 5 16 Let's round these ends of it up. Alright, what I've got is just this uh, radiation tool here, piece of uh, high speed steel, ground for, looks like it was originally ground probably for a quarter inch radius. Just don't want any sharp edges there. All 
All right, we're going to put this in uh, in this direction so that when we, after we part it off, we'll be able to chamfer and dress this in down here. And before we completely part that off, I want to uh, put a little chamfer on that. And we'll roll that with the file a little bit after we get it parted off. Don't believe my parting tool is exactly on center height wise. It was trying to go go under that last little cut. I think we're ready to put these two pieces together permanently and like I say I don't want to go through uh, drilling and tapping for a set screw over there all I'm going to do is go over to the vise I'm going to take the chisel and just put a couple of interruptions in this T handle then we'll meet back over at the uh, workbench and put it together which should then have an interference fit all right, I think we're ready to put the final the two pieces together. Uh, as you saw earlier, this was too loose of a fit for it to stay in there. So all I did was take cold chisel and the ball pin over to the uh, anvil and put a little few serrations in this. Hopefully you can see it. But all I did was just take the chisel and... Hit it a good whack, roll a little bit, and get another one until I got plenty of raised edges, almost like knurling. Uh, I guess I could have put this in the lathe and, and knurled that, that area. Hmm. I have to remember that next time. All right, so let's put this in. We'll open this vise up just enough for it to go through. And that's a good interrupted fit now. All right, I think that's good. What I'm going to do is, uh, I'll, before I put the washer on it and install it, I'm going to carry this over to the parts washer, clean all this cutting oil and grease off of it, um, probably cover the threads after that, and then put a good coat of paint on this. Uh, I'm pretty sure this this material right here would rust pretty quick on the mower that that's it stays locked up but it is under it's under a shelter but uh it's not enclosed in a in a climate controlled area so I'm going to do that and I'm going to wrap this video up here I'll I'll uh tack some pictures onto the end of it uh with it painted and in place thanks for watching you guys take care and I'll see you on the next video Thank mm -hmm. you.